<coughs> I mean, they say it's fine, so I guess it's fine. I guess. I suppose. Maybe. Possibly. Probably. I mean, we're just gonna do the thing until it stops working or we're done. <laughs> How's it going, my dude? Finally awake from your all morning nap. your key cat. Let's get this thing started, I guess. Oh, there we are. <laughs> Let's go! Is the correct response, Andrew. You got this. Um, Alright, let's go game capture. Thinking about it? You gonna do it? Let's do it. <gasps> Alright. And proper resolution. There we go. Hello, everyone. Tad, Andrew, Ella, potentially other people. <laughs> How are y'all doing? 
It is working. <laughs> yeah, like I, like I uh, was telling you, Ella, when I, I had to like restart my computer because um, I couldn't access some of the stuff that I needed to, whatever. So I was panicking because I felt like I was going to be late anyway. <laughs> and then um, I hopped on Twitter just real quick to, you know, check shit out. And it was all like uh, Twitch put out a... a tweet being like, uh, we're working on the issue at hand. And I'm just like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Power flash around noon, but it seems fine now, so better. <laughs> Here's hoping it holds. Please. Um. Well, I'm glad it's better, at least. <laughs> Hold on, let me... Where is my chapstick? There it is. Yeah, for real. I hope your power, like, stays fine. That's never fun. Ella. Yes! We have we have new hair officially. Let me take those off because I don't technically need them right now. Got purple and teal nonsense. I was going to keep it down but I didn't want it all in my face for the time being. Um, but I like it. Put it back how it was. <laughs> you guys chose this! These are the colors you chose. I, yes and no. <laughs> I usually keep my hair short because um, it's easier to take care of and a lot cheaper to dye. Um, but I also like, I was trying to grow my hair out this last year, um, like at the end of 2019, getting a 2020 and then sometime around July, I think it was, uh, I realized that there was, like, a, a legit, like, four inch difference, um, to one side of my hair compared to the other, and I was like, well, I should probably fix that, so then I cut it, and so it's <laughs> even-ish now. Um, so I am trying to, like, grow it back out again. I do, I cut my own hair, and I dye it, because it's a billion times cheaper that way. Um, <laughs> which is fine, but, you know, I still mess it up every once in a while, but whatever. It's just hair. It'll grow back. <laughs> um, I do have an undercut because I have a lot of hair and uh, it gets hot. And so if I just have only half of my hair, it's like I've got normal people hair. Also, if you're able to do that, it's a lifesaver during the lockdown. Facts, though. All these dumb Americans screaming about needing needing to be out of quarantine so they can get their hair cut. And I'm just like, lol. We good. <laughs> um, yeah, though, it's been, it's been fine. I want it to be longer again. I was so sad about how much I had to cut off this last time, but it's okay. I guess. It'll grow back. Um, but yeah, so we've got the new hair color in. It's fantastic and wonderful. Like I said, I'm going to try and do the teal part one more time. Um, but the product itself got like separated, uh, during transit because it probably froze or at least just got too cold or whatever. And we're going to see if it takes more color. The only reasons the ends came out as, uh, colored as they did is because I still had a little bit of blue left in it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm super duper excited and I love it. Y'all chose good. Thank you for not completely destroying my hair. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're back at it today with more Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Uh, we are on chapter six, um, out of seven. So we have one more after this. We are getting there. And I'm very stoked. Next time highlighter yellow barf. <laughs> As somebody who has a yellow skin tone or a more yellow olivey skin tone, it just makes me look sick, dude. <laughs> um, but hello, Jody. Welcome. <laughs> Where am I? 
I like neon colors, but I much prefer pastels for her. Same. There, I mean, like, I've seen plenty of people who can pull off those, like, super intense bright neons, but it's got to be the right shade. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. Is he here? Don't say, don't talk about Mork when he's not here. <laughs> I just have Lamia upstairs with me today. Farley's busy being a food hound downstairs and Devo's asleep on the bed. For once. Oh, just doing a Tommy. Okay, I see. <laughs> uh, the first thing I saw when I opened my eyes was the ceiling of a dark, gloomy room with flickering, uncovered light bulbs. Also trying to will Mork into existence. Also, hi! <laughs> you found that last black lily? Good job! Now that it's daylight. <laughs> uh, the random bursts of, of light they shone were so dim that they only just barely lit up the wood grain on the ceiling enough to see patterns in it. Oh. The back of my head hurt in the same way it would if someone had just pulled my hair really hard. Did someone? I couldn't do anything about it, though, so I just frowned and waited for it to subside. Uh, I wondered if I hit my head somewhere. I can't remember a thing. I suddenly, suddenly realized that my feet weren't touching the ground. Uh-oh. And there was a cold sensation all along my back. I must have been lying down on a hard surface. I tried to move, but both my arms and both my legs had gone to sleep, and they wouldn't budge. I just have to keep lying here until they woke up. I gave up on moving, and instead just stared up at the gloomy ceiling again. I don't like it. The wood grain looks like a person's face. Is it a person's face, Yuka? I knew it wasn't actually a person, but it really did look like one, and he was glaring down at me with a hateful expression. It was creepy. Why does it look familiar? Where have I seen that face before? Oh, that was it. It looked like the screen, that Munch painting we studied in class. Except this face was screaming in anger. He hated me. I'm really starting to get scared now. If only Big Brother were here with me. He'd just pat my head and laugh and tell me how silly I was being. Just do it yourself. Oh yeah, where is Big Brother? I was still a little disoriented, but I turned and twisted my head as best I could manage to see if I could find him anywhere nearby. Why was I sleeping in a place like this anyway? And why wasn't Big Brother at my side, like he always was? I remember bringing Big Brother his umbrella, then doing some kind of charm with his friends. And then I was in an old school building? And then Big Brother and I were looking all over for a bathroom so I could go pee, and we got separated. You go. Big Brother. Why were we in this school to begin with? Maybe the charm failed and this was our punishment? Maybe I was the one who messed it up. I probably shouldn't have even been there. And if I hadn't asked him to help me try to find a bathroom, we wouldn't be separated right now. I should have just held his hand and not let go. I could have lasted a little longer without peeing. Then we'd still be together. What happened to me after that? Um, that's right. I finally found a bathroom, but when I went inside, there were people hanging in there. Lots of them. <laughs> I was so freaked out, I went back into the hall and collapsed onto the floor, and then... And then, I was talking with someone. Um... It was a boy who'd gotten separated from his little sister, I think. My boy! <laughs> he said he'd help me find Big Brother. His name... That's right. His name was Yuya Kizumi. It hurt. 
hurts. It really hurts. Why can't I move? Why? We will be here, Ella. Take your time. Ouch. I then realized that I couldn't see my arms. Where were they? Why weren't they at my sides? Uh-oh, are they cut off? Does she not have arms anymore? <laughs> they were still numb too, so I couldn't feel where they were either. But I tried my best to move them anyway. That sounded like bro- Oh, she's just tied to a table, okay. Am I tied up? I thought maybe the reason I couldn't feel my arms or legs and couldn't move was because I was tied up really tight and it was cutting off my circulation. <laughs> Come on, move. With some effort, I was finally able to move my fingertips. I started feeling everything I could, grateful even for this little bit of reassurance. Uh, I, I feel something. The rope around my wrists had been tied up tight and looped many times around, or er, many times over. And with the circulation trickling back into my hands, it was really painful. It hurts. It hurts. I was so scared. It felt like I'd forgotten how to breathe. Somebody's coming. The footsteps were echoing from out in the hallway. They stopped right in front of this room. Big brother? Big brother? I wriggled in place and screamed as loud as I could. I didn't even care about the old splintery rope cutting into my wrists and ankles anymore. Big brother? Big brother, save me! It's Yuka! I'm right here! Save me, please. It's, it's bigger, brother. <laughs> you shouldn't writhe around like that. The ropes will just hurt that much more. <sighs> Kizumi, I love you, but put a different shirt on. I can't read. <laughs> My apologies for the long wait. It's so dark in here. You must have been terrified. Oh, Yuga. Episode 6, Meyer. Here's my chapter with Kizumi. Um, Kizumi? Are you alright, Yuka? He was looking at me with a caring, sympathetic smile on his face. He seemed to be really concerned about me. Um, please save me. When I came to, I was all tied up. You were indeed, and I'm the one responsible for that. I wanted to make sure I never got separated from my dear little sister ever again. Little sister? You, of course. That's why I had to tie you down, so you wouldn't ever leave me. Why? Kizumi, are you joking with me? Why, you ask? What a silly question. I already told you. Because you're my little sister. What part of that don't you understand? I don't understand it at all. I'm... I'm not... Well, you are still just a child. So maybe you're simply too young to comprehend. Don't worry not. Your big brother will tell you all about it. Kizumi... We're siblings, after all. We simply have to reach an understanding. His eyes looked like they were staring off far off into the distance, like he was in a trance. I'm scared. Big brother, I'm scared. Why was he doing this to me? Er... Yeah, why was he doing this? Why did he tie me up? And why did he look so happy about it? I didn't get any of this. Every hair on my body was standing on end. I was, uh, I was terrified. Man, white text on a white background. Isn't there any way to escape? The corners of my eyes were on fire. I couldn't stop, my, stop myself from crying. Tears were flowing down my face like a waterfall. Hold on, I forgot I can just use my controller for this, which will make it that much nicer for me. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Ugh, sniffles. Uh, Kisimi smiled, then reached out and touched my cheek. 
His hand was ice cold. It was like there was no blood flowing through it at all. Like the hand or like the hand of a dead person. I've been waiting so long for you to wake up. <laughs> now, show me that spark of life. Put everything you've got into it and cry for me, Yuka. Cry as loud as you can. He slowly and hesitantly took his hand off my cheek, then be began walking around me, toward my feet. Then he gently grabbed a, my skirt with one hand and drew a knife from his breast pocket with the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's showtime! It's showtime! Oh, excuse me, he's an, he got this. <laughs> so... There, just like that. That's the voice I've been longing to hear, and the face I've been longing to see. It's only when one's terror and hopelessness reach their peak that the soul truly shines. I want to see more. Direct more of that at me. Yuka. Yuka, I know you're capable of shining even brighter. Well, don't don't you worry. Your big brother will help reveal that light. Covered in blood and writhing in pain. <laughs> True suffering is a far, far prettier sight than this. Hmm? What's wrong, Yuka? This is no time to rest. The fun is only just beginning. So, why don't you try calling me big brother? Big brother! Save me! Big brother! Please, come save me! What are you saying, Yuka? Your big brother's right here! Look! Right in front of your eyes! No! My big brother is... The panic and fear just getting more overpowering. I think I was hyperventilating. But Kizumi showed no mercy. Instead, he reached out and grabbed my neck. Living rabbits really do make far, mu far too much noise. C can't breathe. What a thin neck you have. So soft and supple. I can feel your car uh, carotid artery and your cervical vertebrae perfectly. These muscles, this curvature, so sensual like it was made for my hand. He's a no. Is it painful? It must be painful. This is your fault, you know. I'm your only big brother around here. With that, he let go of my neck and then hastily pulled the knife in his hands right up to my face. He made sure I could see every inch of it clearly and just held it there, slowly turning it for what felt like an eternity. Have you gotten a good look at it, Yuka? The knife was stained with red splatter marks. No, not even red. Just dark. It wasn't a color I knew well, but there was only one thing it could have been. Blood. <laughs> oh, this? No need to worry. Kurosaki dirtied it a bit, but it still cuts like new. I was shivering so hard I could feel my teeth vibrating. A chill ran through every part of me, as if I were so afraid that it had actually lowered my body temperature. The chattering coming from inside my mouth was getting louder and louder, to such an extent that even I was getting distracted by it. What a lovely face. My little sister is doing an excellent job, but her clothes are in the way. Yikes. Pizza me suddenly tore my uniform, exposing my stomach. What's this? The belly is bouncing like a water balloon. It must be full of guts. He laid the knife blade flat across my belly button, and then sudden, the sudden sensation of cold metal against my skin sent even more shivers up and down my spine. <laughs> if it hurts, feel free to scream, okay? There's nothing to be ashamed of. Is that all you got? What's the matter, you got? I haven't given up already, have you? Not after I've finally gotten my hands on the little sister I've always wanted. My throat was completely dry. I actually wanted to cry for help, but the walls of my air pipes were sticking together. Breathing was hard enough. Answer me, Yuka. 
Yuta. Ay. Ay. <laughs> That's a good girl. Now it's time for the main event. <laughs> 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 oh, bigger brother. My good, good, crazy boy. Big, big brother, save me! Fear had taken over. I couldn't hold myself back. I knew I, knew I wouldn't go... It wouldn't go over well, and I knew it would hurt. But I forced myself to cry out. Big brother! Big brother! Oh my god, you guys shut up! Ikario! Hello! Thank you. I'm a fan of it as well. It's it's they're good colors. <laughs> but welcome! You're just in time for Keys and me to be an absolute weirdo. Very excited. I'm your big brother. Remember? Apologize, Yuka. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wow, that simply won't do. You have to say, Big brother, I'm so very sorry. Do it right this time. Big brother. <laughs> Watch enough Jap Japanese animation knows that this is bad. It's not that kind of stream, my friend. <laughs> my, my big brother it, it isn't you, Kizumi. I'm not your big brother. Bitch. What was that just now? Did I imagine it? Yuka! Oh, thank you so much for making you wet yourself. <laughs> Big brother. Hmm? Oh, very interesting. Even in such an embarrassing state, you'll still call out for help from your big brother? Pitiful. You're my adorable little sister, and I'm gonna make you feel real good. Uh, just keys me tormenting Yuka. Nothing super exciting. <laughs> She peed herself again, because that's all Yuka's good for. So there's no need to lie. They're crying in your own urine. It's pitiful. Pitiful? Did I just look down on this girl and call her pitiful? Why? Why am I feeling pity for her? What's happened to me? The poor girl? How is it that even I can exhibit such useless, empty emotions? Is there still some remnant of potential within a man like me to birth these paltry platitudes? I'm not like the others, and yet, even I... I keep telling you, there's no way my little boy would do something like that. But I'm afraid it's true. Your little boy. Yuya brandished a pair of scissors with intent to harm a fellow kindergarten student. So you're saying this is done on purpose? By the time we arrived on the scene, he was looking down on his own bloodied hands and laughing. We've done everything we can for him on our ends. How you wish to deal with him is now up to you. But please wait! Uh, I didn't even manage to crush his eye. Ever since I was little, I've been unable to put myself in another man's shoes. I possess no sympathy, no empathy, and no respect for life. Slowly but surely, my parents started to see me like I was some kind of devil. They shunned me. They ignored me. They focus all their love and affection on me, uh, on my older brother and sister, on my highly successful and generally upstanding brother and sister. Oh, I'm sorry, Kari. I thought you were asking Ella. I'm doing well. Um. Yeah, it's been a super mellow like couple of days, so I'm like, 
super chill, you know? <laughs> but yeah, how are you doing, dude? Oh. <laughs> Everybody liked them, and I began to realize just how different life was for people who are well regarded. And since my parents had given up on me, my siblings were the only ones who ever looked after me. My brother was particularly obnoxious, always flaunting his honor student status and trying to make me into a good little boy. It was sickening. Doing a bit better daily, and for today specifically, way better. I had a horrible headache, but I slept all day in the cold, and now I'm fine. I'm glad you're feeling better. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it sounds like it's been like a, a rough, a little rough time for you, but it's gonna, it's gonna be fine from here on out, probably. I can't actually promise that. But whatever you can do to make it better, you know. Oh. He'd use his standing as my elder to boss me around, and would even follow me to make sure I was behaving. Everything's always gonna be fine in the end. Basically, yeah. <laughs> but I did fight back once. Back in elementary school, I stood up to my older brother. What the hell are you doing? Yuya! What did you just burn? It was an animal. Oh, are you mad because it smells? I just killed it now, so it still had some blood left in it. It was going to smell no matter what. Ugh. Ow. What the hell was that for, asshole? I honestly had no idea why he'd struck me, but this was the first time I'd ever been in the, on the receiving end of violence, and I was pissed. I tried to jump him, but he was just too big. I didn't stand a chance. Why do you have so little regard for life? How can you just kill another living creature? Why would you do something like that, Yuya? You shut the fuck up. I'm the one who found it. I can do whatever the hell I want with it. Wow, mouthy little child. I couldn't believe the asshole actually threw a punch at me. I was determined to hit him back. I wasn't going to give up until I succeeded. Unfortunately, his size really was an insurmountable obstacle for me. My attempt to fight back was cut short by another, much harder blow to the same cheek. Now you listen to me. That was twice now. I was gonna make him pay. I swore I'd injure him. My punch was gonna connect. If I couldn't hit him in the head, any other part of his body would do just as well. Damn it. Just because you were born first, you think you're so tough. Well, if I were just a little bigger, I'd... I'm not getting it. You need to grow up, Yuya. We're always here for facts. As long as you're not a complete idiot, you'll understand what I'm telling you someday. Our physical differences now aren't going to mean a damn thing in the future. Mental growth is what matters most. I want you to become someone who can sympathize with the pain other people feel. I could have sworn I saw tears welling up in his eyes. The hell was that about? He just beat me up, and here he was looking sad. <laughs> Damn it! I'm not like you. Yes, you are. You're my little brother. You'll always be my little brother. Nothing can ever change that. Ugh, I can still remember what a disgustingly sentimental look he was giving me when he said that. You can die too, then. Just die. Die! Die! I don't care if you're my brother. I'll kill- What the hell? Yuya, cut it out! Let me go! Get your hands off me! Wait, asshole! Listen, mental growth is what matters most. Carve that into your heart. Never forget it. Fucking hypocrite. Ow. He acts all kind, but his punches hurt like a son of a bitch. Yuya? Are you alright? You didn't suffer any head trauma or anything, did you? Just leave me alone. You may not understand what he was trying to tell you right now, but one day, when you've grown up, you will. Neither of you know the first damn thing about me. Why? Why the hell was I the last one to be born? I'm a younger sibling. Maybe then I'd have some clue what the fuck you two were talking about. Man, I'd love the piss out of a younger brother or sister. And we do love you, Yuya. Both of us. Sorry, I was just laughing at <laughs> love the piss out of. Well, here's you. <laughs> here's Yuka on a table, peeing herself again.
We know that you're a good kid at heart. Come on, let's make a grave for this little critter. Okay, Yuya? Trash can would be just fine. Yuya! If you keep this up, you're gonna be alone for your whole life. My sister grabbed me by both my shoulders and looked me right in the eyes when she said this. But I didn't care about a word she was saying. I just pushed her away. So you're doing this because you love me, huh? Don't act like you have the first clue what I'm all about, you lying bitch. Yuya, it's the truth. I don't trust you. I don't trust anyone. I won't lose to anyone either. And I certainly won't tolerate other people lying to me. Not ever. He's a me chill. <laughs> That's right. I've been like this for a long time. I've always tried to figure out how to intuit what others were truly feeling, to get honest reactions out of them. Nope. Let's just finish off that bottle of water. <laughs> No one seems to understand that I'm incapable of understanding the people around me. Irony. That's why I've made a point of studying the world and keeping to myself. Simply trying my best not to stand out. Play, a, play the part of a loner. Who's this boy? <laughs> I pretend I'm interested in boring conversations and smile. I pretend I care about the problems of others and fake a concerned expression. Not a single one of my classmates has ever caught on to the fact that it's all just make-believe. They greet me with smiles and I see through their lies. They all act like they, they can judge a person based on his outward actions without ever even seeing his true nature. Every one of them is completely deceived by my act. They're all empty-headed fools, worthy of only my contempt. They're just like my brother and sister, unforgivable cretins who lie to my face. That's why I've decided to conduct a little experiment. A way to see if I can really understand other people. And if I can make them understand me. We're just we're just doing uh the whole Shan Yu approach. Sun Sun Su. <laughs> I wonder if any of you were aware that all I ever wanted was to kill you. Like animals, humans are honest only when they're on the brink of death. They all look uh, they all look me right in the eye and engage me in real, true dialogue, with rare exception. Fine answer. That's what I was hoping for. Show me more. Show me more of those naked emotions. Yes, sadly, I will not perform for you. There was one who held back the screams and the begging and simply passed away in mere silence. The hell is that? Trying to stand up to me? It <laughs> was a thoroughly unsatisfying kill. There needs to be more mutual understanding. Unexpected to see, see some change within myself after coming to this place. But there was nothing. I killed, but felt no remorse, no sympathy, none of the emotions I was supposed to feel. Yuya. Yuya. All life is equal. Don't ever forget that. All life is equal, huh? Yeah, it sure is. It's all exactly the same when it's snuffed out. Humans, animals, and silky worms alike. But I suppose there is one difference. Even if it feels the same, after committing the sin of ending a human life, there's no turning back. No redemption. I didn't regret what I had done, but it did make me realize that I had no prospects now. No future. What was that? Did I just feel pity for someone? My stomach's so growly. Yes, that was it even then. This odd sensation of taking pity on another human being. You're really shaking. Are you alright? I, uh... I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Yeesh is right. 
that badly? Why have you held it in for so long? I was with my big brother until I, until just a moment ago. When we got separated. Didn't you tell your big brother that you needed to use the restroom? I did! But we just kept finding unusable bathrooms. And I won't pee in the hallway, despite the fact that there are corpses everywhere. Just pee in the hallway, Yuka! And I thought about going somewhere else, but... I didn't want my big brother to see me do that, so... <laughs> what a devoted little sister. Yes. This is just what I've been looking for. A being far weaker than I, whom I'm tasked to protect. This is it. This is exactly it. <laughs> Kizami, chill. Um, is something wrong, Kizami? <laughs> I'm sorry, if you heard someone laughing like this... <laughs> in this kind of a context... You need to run. <laughs> you need to get up and go. If I had this girl by my side, this girl upon whom I actually took pity, then maybe there could still be a future, even for a man like me. Indeed, if I'm capable of feeling sorry for someone, then maybe there still exists some means of atoning for my sins. If I could just live with this little girl... <laughs> so, how about it? Will you live with me? Huh? What? Um, I, I think I'll be okay on my own. I'll look for my big brother myself. By yourself? Why? After I finally found a little sister. Why must she even, even she, why must she, even she distance herself from me? Whoa. No. No! <laughs> he says it perfectly. <laughs> Bat rabbit, you're coming with me. <laughs> you see, this is what happens when you disobey your big brother. You go. <laughs> Boy has no calm. I'd been screaming and crying so much that my throat was now bone dry. I couldn't manage any more than a whimper. My throat was actually in a lot of pain. It burned like someone had cut it wide open. Uncomfortable breathing. <laughs> no thank you, Kizumi. Kizumi had raised the knife as if he were about to kill me, but for some reason, he just froze like that. Same though. <laughs> and all I could do was lie there, struggling to breathe. Aside from his heavy panting, I could only hear the sound of my own chattering teeth. <laughs> Bro, you cool? <sighs> I don't want to die. I want to see my big brother again. Even if it's just one last time. I breathed in as deeply as I could, then mustered every last bit of strength I had. I wanted to call out with all my might. I wanted to call for help. <laughs> this guy's the worst, to be honest. I love Kizumi. <laughs> I love him because he is the worst. Big br brother. No good. The sentiment was there, but the words couldn't possibly have been heard by anyone else. Except the person I didn't want to hear them. My big brother won't know to come help me if he acts as loud as I can go. Big brother. Yeah, but Yuka's also the worst. She's whiny and obnoxious and needs to go in a pit and think about what she's done. She's 14 years old and she acts like she's five. I am not about that shit. <laughs> Yeah, I guess the animals are for, uh, unforgivable, but he's a serial killer. That's what they do. Yeah, Yuka's 14! I don't- Sorry, I get real upset about this, because everyone's like, She's so cute and tiny, and they all think that she's like 8 years old. No, this bitch is 14! 
She's whiny and obnoxious. She's a child being teleported in basically a death house. She's 14 years old. She was obnoxious even before she was in the death house. <laughs> no! No! This bitch is in high school! I- <laughs> I hate her! She is- Like, I- I used to really like Yuko when I- Like, the very first time that I played Corpse Party- and then I, like, read the character stuff, and it was like, yeah, she's 14 years old. And I was like, nope, we done. Grow the fuck up. <laughs> there are plenty of other 16-year-olds in this entire place that are handling it better than her. And I'm not saying that everyone has to handle trauma the same way, because they don't. But it's just like, Yuka, you act like you're five. Grow up. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> she just doesn't pee somewhere. Well, she has. She has peed on herself now. Twice. Twice now. Um, no. I, like, I do, I feel bad for her, but it's still, like, I mean, in this situation, nah, Kizumi's still my boy. I fucking hate Yuka. Which is why in the anime, when she gets murdered, I'm there for it. I said it. <laughs> a big fascination with her refusing to pee just somewhere. 14. Again, I'm not saying that like her response to the situation exactly is the issue. She was acting like this before they got here. And that annoys me. <laughs> I just don't act like a fucking child. Yeah, it's that she acts like she's five. Like, again, like, even even before all the murder and death and stuff, like, she shows up into the classroom and is all, like, just acts like she's a freaking infant. And I, I don't like that. I don't... It's gross. It's dumb. Grow up. <laughs> no, one, no one will ever change my mind that Yuka is just annoying. I'm sorry. I feel very strongly about this. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no yuka yuka is 14 years old and before they even got to heavenly host still at kisaragi and like at home with uh satoshi and all that she still acted like she was five years old and i don't dig on it <laughs> um Anyway, I'll stop screaming about that now. Sorry. <laughs> um, my strange scream seemed uh, to snap Kizumi out of his trance. He brought the point? Tip? Brought the tip of his knife down onto my cheek, but didn't break the skin. You do know that now... No matter how much you scream, no one's gonna come save you, right? He was looking down at me with blank, empty eyes. And I and I just want to point out that it's like, even if it was Sachiko or uh, Yoshikazu or whatever the fuck his name is, if they were if they were all in this room doing this shit to, to Yuka, I would still stand by them. I don't like Yuka. <laughs> And it's, again, not because of her specific response to this situation here, but it's the fact that she's just, like, she infantilizes herself all the time, and that's gross. Don't do that shit. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, I mean, like, a response, like, her crying and peeing herself, that's fine. Like, I get it. It's spooky. Like, you're in a spooky place and someone's threatening to murder you. That's fine. Respond to that how you're going to, but just, like, everything else... Anywho, I said I was going to stop talking about it, and then I didn't. <laughs> I've had to defend myself on this a lot, though, because people are like, but she's just a child, and it's like, sure, but she's not that much younger than anyone else in this game. Don't treat her like she's five years old. Because she not. <laughs> oh. Anyway. B big brother! <laughs> it's fine to not like people. Everyone doesn't like everyone. Yeah, but I like it when she dies in the game. <laughs> and that's a little screwed up, and I acknowledge that. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I was absolutely certain about that. He may not have found me, um, he may not have found me yet, but he knew he was looking. He was worried about, he was worried and looking all over for me. It was only a matter of time. And again, this <laughs> white text with a white background. That goddamn bug, why haven't they fixed it yet? Excuse me. Big Brother is my prince after all, and the prince always comes to rescue the princess. That shit. That shit. No. <laughs> Your brother is like two years older than you are. He's not yeah, uh, he's not coming. After all, he's already here. Your big brother is right here. He he is coming. Shut your mouth. My struggle to get out words uh get out the words came to an abrupt end as Kizumi's hand uh pressed down hard on my face, covering my nose and mouth and suffocating me. <laughs> well, sorry. For all the pain and uh, fear I was feeling, I knew I had a chance to fight back. So I opened my mouth and bit down hard on his palm. Good! Good! Thank you! <laughs> I must have bitten even harder than I thought. I could taste his blood. It was warm and minerally and slid down my parched throat, easing a little of the... Uh, a little bit of the pain and dryness. So Yuka's a vampire now. He is coming! Big Brother is coming for me! I just kept shouting. I didn't care if these were the last words I ever said. I had no regrets. I just wanted to cry out. I had the same thought Yuka vampire confirms! <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> I will- okay, I said that no one could convince me otherwise. By the end of this chapter, depending on what happens to Yuka, she might be able to redeem herself with me somewhat. I just need her to grow the fuck up. <laughs> and what better way to grow up than, you know, trauma? <laughs> Y'all right, Kizumi? Is he going through the blackening now? Bro! What? <laughs> and it's like, I get people being sheltered, but at the same time, like, there's a difference between sheltering and babying. Don't baby your kids, please. Do the world an entire favor and, like, don't baby them. <laughs> Kizumi just grabbed his ha head in both hands and let out a cry of pain that didn't even sound human. What is it? What is this? What the hell is this voice I'm hearing? Did I really want a little sister? I did. I wanted a little sister. Someone weaker than I. Yes. Someone who needed me. Wait, was it really a little sister that I wanted? That's right. If I had a little sister, I'd change. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend that this is literally nothing supernatural, su supernatural, or like him going through the black in here or anything. It's literally just his first time having a conscience. That's what's happening. <laughs> it makes it that much more funny. <laughs> he grabbed his head again and began stumbling around. I think it is, though. <laughs> I really hope it is. <laughs> I do. I really hope it isn't some supernatural nonsense. I'd be fine with it, too, but just, like, I want this to literally be him just reeling from the fact that, oh, no, I can tell what's right and wrong now. <laughs> um, he looked like he was in real pain. There were, uh, there were even tears in his eyes. Hey, welcome! Or I guess I should go... Abe. Welcome, buddy. <laughs> You're just in time for Kizumi to have some feelings. <laughs> Thank you. 
damn it. God damn it. God damn it all. What does it all mean? I don't need a reason. Not now. It's too late for that. Avery, you having a stroke? There in chat? This is who I am now. This is what I've become. Everything is mine. I've stomped out everyone in my way and held my head high the whole time. <laughs> Feelings. Yeah, I saw that you were super busy with work. Are you done for today? Well, you should be. It's, what, 10 o'clock for you? <laughs> I'm doing well, though. Chat has said that they've been doing well, but I'll allow them to speak. <laughs> yeah, I should stop with that flow state. That's valid. <laughs> Jody, what? <laughs> oh, wait, no, I know it. Okay, I know what you're referencing. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second because I was like, that's not like you. And then I was like, oh, right. Super seducer. <laughs> you should stop. Abe, stop. Stop working. Chill out. Relax for a minute. <laughs> Are you okay? Does, does your head hurt? I have some headache medicine in my pocket. Yuka, now is not the time to be offering your murderer some ibuprofen. <laughs> you can take some if you want. <laughs> He's so chill. Oh, we stomping away, are we? Oh! oh hey, Yoshikazu, what's up, boy? How's it come to this? If I had a little sister, maybe I'd have acted more like a big brother should. Yes, I'm sure of it. I'd have been just like my asshole brother when he was crying over me. <laughs> have a Kit Kat. Lol. He fell to his knees and just stayed like that, not moving, maybe not even breathing. Are we gonna get smushed? Oh well, hey, it was me waking up yesterday after drinking. After another unnerving yell, that huge man with a hammer just stood there, staring at me. He had blood splattered all over him. It's facts, though. <laughs> I was not comfortable. <laughs> Somehow, though, I got the impression he wasn't going to attack me. What? What is giving you this impression? He is a large man with a sledgehammer covered in blood. Are you... Here to save me? Oh, he looks sad. He reached one hand toward me, slowly and gently. Though it may have been a little too slowly, he moved like a zombie, as if I were watching a TV show in slow motion. Literally blood dripping from his eyes. Looks like a nice guy. <laughs> What's wrong? And how does that make you feel? It almost seemed like he was afraid of me. But I was just a little girl tied to a table. What could he possibly think I'd do to him? Is there someone else here? He didn't answer. I wasn't even sure he heard the question. He wasn't looking at me. He was looking past me. Are we gonna turn around? There's Sachiko just right up in our face being a weirdo. I wanna know what you're looking at. Yeah, yes it is. <laughs> Killer. Yeah, I was thinking Sachiko, right? His mournful yell echoed throughout the room. 
And then we just screamed at each other for the next ten minutes. My arms and legs suddenly went slack. I felt like I could move them now. Aw, he broke us free! How nice. Slowly I opened my eyes and confirmed that this enormous man had just smashed apart the dry knots that were holding my hands and feet in place. I knew I didn't have much time. I tried my hardest to wake up uh, my sleeping hands and feet and shake the broken, splintered ropes from my wrists and ankles. Kill her! Oh, he don't wanna. Uh, uh, um. So Zombie Man and Kizumi both gained a conscience at the same time. So, Zombie Boy, Yoshikazu is I think I think is what his name from the first game was. Um, I mean, he's under Sachiko's control, but I don't think he ever really wanted to hurt anyone. Um, no, he just set her free so he could have fun chasing her before he kills her. Good point. Um, let's save, because we got some options. Um, so I mean, like, he's definitely a bad guy, but not... I never took it as, like, him actively wanting to hurt any of these kids or anything like that. Uh, Sachiko was just horrific and terrifying and, you know, had him under her influence. Well, let's consider the other options. My arms and legs were still so numb that I couldn't trust myself to get out of the room safely. I had to think of something else. I had to buy some time. Also, we'll be here when you get back, Ella. It seemed like the little girl was pulling the huge man's strings, and he didn't really want to hurt me. So maybe I could reason with him? Um... What are you doing? Kill her! What's wrong? He suddenly doubled over and began clawing at his throat, seemingly in a great deal of pain. Reasoning with him really wasn't going to work. He was too unstable, and if it came down to me or the little girl, I was pretty sure I wouldn't win. Now might be my chance to escape. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> oh, we let, we let me look around? Decayed skeletal corpse. There's nothing about its outward appearance that gives any clear indication of age or gender. However, there's a student ID name tag partially lodged in its ribcage that indicates it probably belonged to a junior high school girl. Uh, Takine Municipal Middle School, I, Honda. Well, since we're just kind of hanging out in here. <laughs> it's a faucet here, but I don't know if it'll actually work. That's what I thought. No water. My throat is so dry. What do I do? There has to be some way out of this. Uh, there's a bottle on the ground filled with a transparent liquid. Take it! Take it! I wonder what's in here. It's not water, is it? Of course it's hydrochloric acid. Why wouldn't it be? How long are you planning to squat there like that? Kill her! Instinctively, I threw the glass bottle at the huge man with the hammer. That- why? <laughs> he flinched and stumbled backwards. His hammer was still raised, however, and smashed into one of the light bulbs on the ceiling, shattering it. it it's dark, but I might be able to get away now. The feeling had begun returning to my legs, so I wasted no time. Habitually yelling, excuse me, as I left, I darted through the dark lab, using what I remembered of its layout to avoid obstacles and reach the door. Well, at least we're still polite, I guess. Hey, did you do that on purpose? Worthless scum. Fix it or you get no more rewards from me. Just go after her already. <laughs> How many times have we crossed paths with that girl now? <laughs> Maybe she has the paper scrap to keep her safe. Her fate hasn't been sealed yet. <laughs> Puts headphones back on to hear screaming. Yup! <laughs> That's corpse party! Uh, we just threw some hydrochloric acid at him and that's about it. And then we got out. I have to... 
I have to find somewhere to hide. But that could be why he didn't attack us. Um, yeah, the big man. Which, I mean, like, I think we kind of figured that if you lost your paper scrap, that was it. You were, like, confirmed dead. Like, you're not gonna get out. Um, so I wonder if, if you have your paper scrap on you, if he can't, if, uh, big man can't hurt you at all. Like, if that's what kind of kept him from smashing. Uh, I can hear the sounds of someone else running just a short distance in front of me. I couldn't make out who it was with any certainty, but I did briefly catch a glimpse of a figure retreating into the darkness. And it looked like... Big Brother? That was Big Brother just now, wasn't it? I took off in pursuit. If that was Big Brother, then I just had to catch up to him. Big Brother! Big Brother! He mustn't have heard me. His pace never slowed and I saw him disappear around a corner. He's not stopping. I have to go after him. Big Brother! Big Brother! Woof. Okay, where are we? <laughs> okay, so we're on the second floor. The lab is where we came from, isn't it? Same there. This is the room where I was tied up, isn't it? I don't want to go in there ever again. Okay. I guess I just wanted that confirmation. <laughs> so good to know. Oof. Alright. Time to explore. The school nurse's office? Looks like he's not in here. Excuse you. He's gonna find me if I stay here. I have to run. I just wanted to see if there was anything super obvious for the time being. Let's go... I don't want to go downstairs just yet. Tense. <laughs> Same. Like, I want to know... Like, I'm sure if we do, like, hang out in one space too long or, like, trigger certain, like, objects or whatever, um, that he'll find us. But I, like, even though I don't know how that mechanic works just yet, I'm like, I don't want to hang out in any one space too long. Big brother, where did you go? It's too quiet. I don't think he came this way. I should look for him back in the main hallway. Okay, well, give me a second to find some name tags, Yuka. <laughs> Ugh! Also, that's a whole move. My throat is super dry. It's so dry here! It's gross and I hate it. It's really cold in here. Oh, Ella. I will hydrate some more then. <laughs> Thank you, Ella. You reminded me too. <laughs> Everybody's gotta take some water. It's important. Oh, excuse me. 
I'm not gonna lie, my throat has been bad lately. Same! No, same! <laughs> Jody wants a kitty trio update. They have been doing well. Um, Farley's mostly been staying downstairs the last few days, and I think it's just because it's warmer down there, uh, which is fair. <laughs> um, and Devo's been like super mellow uh, as of like yesterday and today. He is currently passed out on the bed, like a good sweet sweet boy. Um, and as per usual, Lamy is just passed out under the desk. Because what else is she gonna do? My useless lump. <laughs> um, I am putting together a wish list for them of, like, toys and things that I want to get. Um, and I know, like, other, other streamers offer that up as well as things to, like, if people ever want to gift things. I can post that for you guys if you want it, even just to like kind of look at what I've got. Um, but it was mostly for like myself. You need to do me Dory's? Yes! Do it! So I can maybe, may or may not get you a thing for me Dory. Um, <laughs> but like, especially since I'm still trying to like work with Lamia as far as uh, her stroke recovery is concerned. Um, like, there's a bunch of, like, different toys and stuff in there that I think she would like and that would do well for her. Let me tell you how hard it is to find cat toys that don't have catnip in them. Um, which I only point out because, like, Devo and Farley handle catnip just fine, but it makes Lamia super mean and really bitey. And so I don't give her catnip. <laughs> um... Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> I was, uh, I mean, I can, I can go into detail much later. Basically, I just want to find, like, bigger toys that she can, like, grab and play with. Um, kind of, I think they're called, like, kickers. Uh, so, uh, but a lot of them, like, have, like, catnip in them. I found, I also found, like, a couple of dental toys, um, that I wanted to have her, her specifically use. Uh, cause, like, with her eating wet food all the time, it's not great for their teeth. Um, and, uh, yeah. And it has, like, fortunately, it, like, comes with catnip, but it doesn't come with it inside the toy. You can just, like, put it in there. Um, so I have treats that I want to get to put inside the toy so that she, like, chomps on it. Uh, but anything that has, like... Some, like a refillable pouch or something with catnip is fine because like I can take that out and wash it and you know make sure that it's not gonna make her go crazy <laughs> um, but yeah I guess I'll uh, after the stream I'll link it in the discord and then I do plan on I'm gonna be working on the my uh, twitch bio at some point it's been a process um, and I'll link it there as well for people if you want to you know, spoil my cats with and for me. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that would be, that could be something fun to do. And like I said, I'm pretty much going to buy all that stuff anyway, eventually. But if people have the, the desire to pitch in, that would be dope. Um. Oh, that man's coming. <laughs> oh, Lord, he coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're up for it, I know it's gonna be late by the time we get <laughs> by the time we're done with the stream. Um, but yeah, I'm like super down for for looking for stuff. I did get my uh, I got my uh, Amazon Prime account back finally because uh, I'm technically a student and can do that. Yeah, at midnight for sure. I know that you're up super late too, though, Ella, but I don't want to just assume that you'll hang out with me all night. <laughs> I acknowledge that people have things that they're doing. Or other things that go on aside from me. Why you do, I don't know. No, I'm joking. I, I can't even, like... <laughs> I can't even keep that up. <laughs> Um, but yeah, kitty cats are doing good, like I said. <laughs> Shut up, babe. <laughs> mm. 
nothing, I said nothing. Don't worry about it. Everything is fine. Um, yeah, there's like a... I want to get a couple of cat beds, especially for little miss who sleeps under my desk all day. <laughs> I have like blankets and stuff down there for her. Um, but I think it would be fun to have like a, or not fun, but nice to have a dedicated bed for her. Um, and there was also like a donut bed that I found, um, that I think Devo would like cause he likes to be snuggled in things. <laughs> you can never have too many pet beds. <laughs> I support this. Why I don't think he came this way. Okay, so we gotta go downstairs. Also, what is my... What is my darkening gauge at? I want one of those plastic ones to put this, this on so it hides its shape for her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah! I think I know what you're talking about. So it holds its shape for her. Yes! Yes. Yes, do it. Get it. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. I mean, you've seen my typos. Pleate. Pleate, do this. <laughs> uh oh. What's that noise? Is it an earthquake? Yes. Yes, it is. Suddenly, my field of vision started going topsy turvy. Was I falling? It was an earthquake, but there was more than just that. The floor beneath me was moving up and down in time with the quake's left and right motion. Barf. <laughs> Big brother. Big brother! I tried putting one hand on the floor for balance and getting back to my feet. I need to keep going after Big Brother. Otherwise, I'll lose this trail. I thought I'd done it. I was standing now and had started getting used to the vibrations. As long as I hugged the walls, I could walk. But that all quite literally came crashing down around me, uh, me soon enough. The wildly shaking floor cracked, then crumbled, and I was free falling. <laughs> <I'm> fa <laughs> ah! Bye, Yuka! <laughs> Ouch. Oh no. I raised my head and found myself lying on top of a pile of rubble. I wasn't too much worse for the wh for wear, though all things considered. I honestly don't know how she's still alive at this point, right though? Oh my god. Where am I? I looked all around me frantically but saw nothing even remotely familiar. This was definitely someplace new. And it didn't feel much like a school anymore. The walls and floor were made from packed dirt, with only railroad ties keeping it all together. Ugh. It's really musty down here. I knew I was underground. I had to be. It just felt that way. There were no windows anywhere, and based on the smell, there was no ventilation either. Are you sure you're just not in my house? <laughs> it's really hard to breathe. Oh no, big brother. Big Brother might have gotten caught off guard by that earthquake too, I thought. He could be down here. It was a big one after all. Maybe he was injured. Maybe he couldn't move. I, I have to find him right away. I tried pushing myself up from the pile of rubble, ready to shoot to my feet and continue the search. That didn't last long, however. My hands and feet were still a little numb from the ropes, making it hard to keep my balance. I fell back onto my butt. And then she peed again. <laughs> my underwear was completely waterlogged, like a full sponge. It squished unpleasantly on the debris, sending a cold chill through my entire body. Literally had to stop myself from reading that as Debris. Because I used to do that, like, ironically for so long, and now it's become almost unironic, and I hate it. <laughs> and fragile. <laughs> Debra! <laughs> What's going on? I reached down and felt it, and it was absolutely soaked through. It would take forever for it to dry out. That's right. I forgot I peed myself. 
Oh my god, Yuga. <sighs> Garbanzos! <laughs> Andrew, no! <laughs> Gotta go get some Garbanzos. <laughs> I miss making food with you, friend. <laughs> I miss, I miss you, friend. Cannot imagine the fucking chafing she's got to be feeling right, though. Right, though. <laughs> um. Yeah. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> it's so gross. Tears were welling up in my eyes. How could I be so pathetic? I forced myself to my feet, doing my best to try to try ignoring the squishy sensation. Just take them off. Just lose them. Just drop them in the middle of the hallway and move on. No one has to know they're yours. <laughs> See, like, I'm not gonna rag on her for, like, for necessarily peeing herself while she was scared, but it's just like... Domo, you scared the piss out of me. Oh my god. Did you guys hear him jump off the couch? <laughs> <laughs> she could never go commando, right? She would freak out. Um, ugh. Excuse me while I try and find my heart. Uh, <laughs> my panties, panties were noticeably heavier now, and the urine they absorbed was practically ice cold. I couldn't go on like this. I don't like that noise. <laughs> I was gonna get a rash or catch pneumonia or something. How are you gonna- <laughs> Sorry. What? <laughs> I'm gonna catch pneumonia? And every step was gonna be its own form of mushy gushy hell. I'm we're just maybe she is seven. Character profile said she was fourteen. But what could I do? I could take them off, but then what? Carry them with me? Ew. Leave them on the floor for someone else to find? No thanks. Literally no one has to know that they're yours. Unless your name is embroidered into the band of your underwear. Just abandon them. <laughs> And even then, you got bigger issues. <laughs> oh my god. I swallowed my pride, held back my tears as best I could, and waddled onward. Isn't there anywhere I can go to get these off? Yeah, where you are. <laughs> right, I was gonna check my darkening. Holy shit, 47%. Yikes. I still <laughs> I still just love the names of these rooms. Like death room and body pool. Oh, I should have probably stopped and checked all the hallways. That's fine. Do it in a minute. Actually, I lied. We'll do it now. <laughs> That's where we started, right? Whatever. I'm, I'm just gonna poke around, see if we can find some uh, student ID tags. There's nothing there. Wow, okay, so what I see is what I see, and I can't move the camera. That's cool. Oh, hi! It's a set of skeletal remains. Given its tiny stature, it's likely belonged, or it likely, very likely belonged to an elementary school student in life. There's a student ID name tag. Halfway lodged inside the poor girl's ribcage. Great Harbor Elementary School, Chihiro Tamamura. Um, what time is it? Would you ever do a reward for Kitty Snacko, or would it be too awkward? Um, I could probably figure out a way to do it. The issue is I don't, I don't give the cat snacks very often. Um, the ones that I'm gonna be picking up here soon are gonna be dental treats. 
Um, because Lamia will literally make herself sick <laughs> with just a couple of them. Because she's a cool kid. Um, but I could see about, like, potentially doing, like, or, like, limiting the number of times it could be redeemed in a single stream. And we could do one specifically for Lamia, because she's pretty much always here when I'm streaming. The other cats would just be difficult, because they wander off, and I don't want to have to go find a cat. <laughs> so yeah, I can consider it and see what we can do. The other problem is just, like, I would have to move the webcam. I am looking into getting a second one for, like, a pet cam at some point. Uh, again, specifically for Lamia. Because <laughs> she's always down there. Um, but yeah, I'll, I can see, I'll see what I can do about potentially uh, getting a, a treat redeemable. Or just seeing if it would be, would be something that we could easily manage. Uh, oh, I was skipping dialogue. Lol. <laughs> Can you tell I don't want to listen to anything that Yuka has to say? Uh, is this actually- is this an actual bathroom? There are no protective seals and no weird smells. The only bathrooms I'd seen up to this point were un unusable. Charms on the door, mysteriously sealing the room shut, bodies hanging in the stalls. But this looked to be a completely normal bathroom. Certainly the most normal I'd seen since getting stuck in this place anyway. Well, I guess- am, are, are we not in the bathroom? I remember asking you before, but couldn't remember why you didn't do it. I remember you saying that you probably wouldn't, but couldn't remember why. Yeah, it's, uh, it's mostly just a matter of, like, Lamia gets sick very easily <laughs> in general. Um, but like I said, like, I've got, I've got these dental treats coming in, um, again, just as a means of, like, trying to keep her, uh, her teeth clean and healthy because of her wet food. Um, and if she responds well to those, then I can look into setting something up, potentially. Poor kitty, though. She don't give a shit. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's a bummer. Um, Cause she's a sweet kid. But she gets her special food now, so she, you know, yeah, she just she doesn't she doesn't care. <laughs> she's like whatever about it. Like she gets super excited when there are treats, but like she also is not. She's not food motivated in the way that other. Like my other cats are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Alright, so that's locked. Yeah, no, it's nice that she just doesn't care. <laughs> I am I am blessed with a cat that doesn't give a fuck. No, at this point, the only thing she really cares about is her is her morning feeding, in which case she will do everything she can to try and trip me. But other than that, it's like, if I'm eating food, or if I have something that, like, you know, normally... Oh. Um. Or if I'm, like, eating fish, like, the other cats will definitely, like, congregate and not beg, per se, but sit around, you know, on the off chance that someone drops something... She just does it. She's just here. She just exists. <laughs> uh, it's really dark in here. It's not. It's not, though. Yuka, it's not dark. <laughs> there are thoroughly decomposed remains on the table here. Based on general appearance and what's left of the deceased's clothing, they do appear to belong to a very young girl. Her name tag is still affixed to her chest. Great Harbor Elementary School, Mako Sakurai. All right, well. Thanks, lady. Oh, another body. There's a cabinet here that looks big enough to fit a whole person inside. Might make a good hiding spot. If anyone comes, maybe I should close myself inside here. But if anyone did come, it would be really scary, so maybe I should just get out of this room while I can. Oh, shit. 
The door to the room suddenly slammed shut, and the inside of it was missing its doorknob, rendering it unopenable. It seemed I had been locked in. What do I do? Is there anything in here I can use in place of a doorknob? Yeah, use this this person's head. This room again, right? I should have known better. It's a set of skeletal remains. There doesn't seem to be any way to determine gender from clothing or build alone. But there is a student ID name tag nearby, bearing a traditionally feminine name. Kumashiro Trade School Sakura Motoi. Mo 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 There's a nail puller shoved into the sink's drain. Pull it out. Only saving over that one because it was not a, uh, not a choice. It was just me saving. Okay. If I stick this into the door, I might just be able to use it to use it like a doorknob. We need to. Oh, that was us making that noise. Okay, <laughs> it worked. Now I can get out of here. Good. Let's never go in there again. Um, I am gonna pause right quick and we will take a short break because I've had enough water that bathrooms are necessary um but yeah we'll be back in just a minute I believe Farley is on the couch yeah he is well, let me not kick my uh, cords and break some things farts hi um, so yeah, we'll take a short break and we will be RB. Yeah, the big boy farts. <laughs> He's our good big dumb boy. We love Fartly. Oh, I'm sorry, I messed up your fur. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, oof, my darkening is at fifty-three percent, and I don't like that. I'll just. 
second. Okay. Oof. I guess. Let's go. Hey, don't do that. Game. Figure your shit out. I was about to panic. <laughs> if it didn't come back. Okay, let's see. Let's go this way. Oh, hi, Llama. Hey, more bodies! It's a decayed skeletal corpse. The clothing and diminutive stature suggest this was likely an elementary school boy. His name tag is still pinned to his breast pocket. Great Harbor Elementary School, Hiroshi Takano. Sweet. Two liter bottle of aloe. Mm. Yes, please. Drink some for me, please. It's a decaying corpse. Based on outward appearance and uniform, this was likely a junior high school girl. Student ID, ta ID name tag seems to have survived intact. Takine Municipal Middle School, Koi Ka Kawahara. I want aloe. I just wanted sushi, honestly. But that's still not happening, because we still haven't had our, our drive plowed. Yeah. <laughs> sushi! That's like, that's what my folks and I do uh, at the beginning of the year, like on New Year's Day, usually. Um, we usually go out to get sushi. Uh, but obviously that's not an option this year. Uh, but the sushi place that we hit up is doing uh, delivery and pickups. And so we were going to order some. And like we were going to go pick it up and have them like, you know, curbside drop it off for us. But we can't get out of our driveway. Because <laughs> our landlord still hasn't come to, to get rid of all the snow. So hopefully tomorrow... Yep, still. Maybe that's what I'll do for dinner. Bring me some. Please. Formosa or Sushia? Sushia. <laughs> I can, no. So I can get out of the house now. I can, like, I can open the door and get to the car. But there's so much snow in the driveway that I- that we can't get out of the driveway. Hashtag sports car. You can do it. Just hit it real fast and you'll be fine. The roads are fine, so you can pick up some speed before you, you know, make it- make it up, up the drive. You get so stuck at your place. I know. <laughs> it's a newly deceased corpse, practically still warm. It's easy to tell at a glance that this was a female junior high school student. I've almost gone into a ditch at your place. I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> it's that those good, good country roads. Um, Michi Morita Moritoshi. Thanks, Michi. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. So yeah, I think I think it was yesterday I was joking that like my landlord would show up about, you know, two o'clock today to, to plow. Did not happen. He's still not here. <laughs> we never get to leave anymore. Alright, what are we doing? More bodies. It's a set of skeletal remains. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, like, our... The... Uh, hi the highway and the road outside my house are totally fine. I'll, uh, I'll come down to the road to you, my dude. <laughs> no, but don't. But don't. I don't want anyone getting hurt. There's a student ID tag lodged in its eye socket, identifying these remains as likely having belonged to a male junior high student. Takine Municipal Middle School, Kyugo Shibuya. Yeah. That's where that goes. Andrew and I are saying two very different things. I'm pretty sure that is where you put your ID. It's locked. I wonder what Big Brother is doing right now. Big Brother. I'm sorry, did I... It did just increase more. The fuck? Oh, hey, Emmy, welcome. Oh, thanks. It's all right, I guess. I like my hair, I suppose. <laughs> Is this an actual bathroom? There are no protective seals. Yeah, just fucking go in there, Yuka! Oh my god. There's a loose piece of wood on the ground here. You pulled yourself out of bed? Did you have to? <laughs> this might be useful for something. Piece of wood! I wonder if I can get in the stalls. Try pulling on one of the wooden stall doors. Anybody in here? A plank. <laughs> Thank you, Ella. <laughs> I listen carefully for any hint of a response, even going as so far as to hold my breath. <laughs> it is the right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm finally awake too, haha. -ha. <laughs> Peppermint tea? Wait, what? Um, there wasn't a single sound to be heard. The entire room was dead silent. The walls were made from packed dirt after all, and there was a lot of moisture in the air. Effectively, this whole place was naturally soundproof. This is perfect. There's nobody else around. Ah. Good morning. I backed away from the stall slightly and almost tripped over a fairly sizable crack in the ground. About five centimeters wide and one centimeter thick. Thick. Sorry. <laughs> this might be a good spot to hide them. Finally, I was able to get out of these waterlogged panties. Despite being alone, I still crouched down and removed them as discreetly as I could. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, uh, I will refrain from saying what I was going to say. And stuff them tightly into the crack I discovered. The hole's not big enough. Some of it's still sticking out. If only there were just a little more space. What do I do now? Use the plank of wood. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, this is the fundamental difference between Yuka and I. She's all sitting here trying to be discreet, and I would literally just be like, nope! And just get rid of everything. Be like, nah, we're done. We're cool. <laughs> Slash, I would have peed in the hallway literally hours ago <laughs> in front of whoever at that point. I don't give a crap. You gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> Me too, probably. Like, I mean, the pee thing, I wouldn't do that in just any situation, but <laughs> I wouldn't pee in this mess because I'd pee in the hall. Same. You have to make direct eye contact the whole time. Obviously. You have to let them know that you don't give a shit. <laughs> but yeah, seriously. Like, no, I'm sorry. If I have to pee and there's, like, we have no other options, I'm just gonna go in the corner. Just give me a minute. <laughs> um... I'm so glad Big Brother didn't have to see me doing this. Please, don't let anybody find me until I'm done. 
I'll stand watch. I definitely read that as, I will watch. <laughs> or like, I will stand and watch. And it's like, Emmy, no. <laughs> or like the sink or something. Damn, right? Like, all those things are pretty nasty anyway. Just do it. Just do it! <laughs> I I'm done. <laughs> Not that Big Brother would be likely to wander into a girl's bathroom. Yeah, just do it! <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was possible given the circumstances, so just to be safe, I figured it couldn't hurt to pray that that didn't happen. Maybe I should stuff them down even further. It'd be embarrassing if anyone were to find these after all. You are spending way too much time on this shit, Yuka. Literally, I don't think anyone here would care if they found a pair of underwear just lying around. There are bigger problems. Yes. My underwear was now totally buried and out of sight. There was no, uh, no way anyone could come across it if they didn't know it was there. Satisfied, I stood up. Is she still whining about her pee undies? Yes. It's so drafty now. Girl, have you never- <sighs> But it's still a lot better than wearing wet panties. Excuse you. It's been nothing but earthquakes since we got here. I wonder if this place will be okay. It seems even older than the school building. I peeked my head out from the bathroom and looked around. Nobody's out there, right? Big brother! Big brother! And then Yoshikazu shows up and beats the shit out of us. My voice echoed a lot louder than I was expecting. It actually surprised me. Considering the wet dirt walls, I didn't think sound would travel that far. I'm scared. Careful, Yuka! You might get pneumonia! <laughs> no, we've already... We already had a run-in with Bigger Brother. He suddenly developed a conscience and it was physically painful for him. And then Yoshikazu beat, beat his head in. I'm not sure if he's dead or alive at this point. He's probably dead. I just want to be able to see him as the fucking anatomical model. Please and thank you. Uh, if any of Big Brother's friends are nearby, please. I know, I was sad too. BRB, okay, Ella. We'll be here. I really want to wash my hands. I began walking through the hall once again, this time a bit slower and more unevenly due to exhaustion. Just spit on your hands, you'll be fine. Just cop. <laughs> All right. Was it the storehouse that opened up? Is that what that big crashy sound was? Better than nothing. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I just- I still feel like there are bigger problems at- at hand than worrying about your pee underwear and needing to wash your hands. Like, at this moment, like, I don't know. <laughs> this is how she's coping. I guess. I won't- I won't nitpick at that at the moment, but this whole, like, I have to bury my underwear so no one knows. It's like, you got- no one- no one will give a shit. <laughs> And if they do, then you know to stay away from them because they're a weirdo. Where is she? I'm looking at you. <laughs> True. Use, it, use that as a defense mechanism. Oh no, there's soaking wet panties over here. The door to this particular room was shutter, uh, shuddering ever so slightly, as if there were a breeze blowing against it gently from inside. My greatest shame. <laughs> Peandies in a ghost apocalypse. Of all the things. <laughs> oh god. Um, for real though. I think I can open this. Slowly and hesitantly, I put both hands on the doorknob and started to turn. I guess I can go in. Alright, let's see what's in here. I hope the next to an exit somewhere. Yeah, you, you, we did it bad. As soon as the door opened, even a crack, a powerful, horrible stench slammed into my face and twisted around my nasal cavities like a jet of water. This is... the smell of something rotting. I was instantly feeling nauseous and lightheaded, as if I were suddenly deprived of oxygen. 
I can't do this. I, I need to get out of here. <laughs> that sounded like water. Is there water in here? No, it's blood! <laughs> Holding my nose, I stepped back into the room and crept over toward the source of the noise. If there were water here, maybe I could wash my hands, I thought. Where is it? My extreme thirst came back full force as well. Clean water was the greatest thing I could have possibly found at this point. Don't, right? Right? Don't do it! I accidentally kicked over a bucket, spilling its contents onto the ground in front of me. Yeah. Countless flies immediately flew out from the overturned bucket and began swarming all around me. Their buzzing wings sounded right up against my ears, as if they were attacking me. I let go of my nose and began flailing my arms wildly, attempting in vain to drive them away. Welcome back, Ella. <laughs> I can't even see my hands in front of my face. Uh, as I haphazardly stumbled forward, I found my foot splashing in shallow liquid. Mere moments later, my hand came in contact with the wall and brushed against the switch. I heard a faint clicking sound, and then- Always come back at the best times, right? <laughs> Is there a good time to come back to in Corpse Party, though, realistically? <laughs> the fly sounds freaked me the hell out. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, sweet, a switch. I have huge speakers, it was so real. <laughs> Dude, I can't, so that game that we were playing the other night, um, I guess both of them, both simulacras. Like, the knocking, their sound design in those games are so good because there were legit times that, like, I've got, um, off to, off to my left over here is a wall that is <laughs> literally just, like, a plaster wall separating me from the attic crawl space. And there were a couple of times that, like, that knocking, especially when it came from, like, the left side of my headphones, legit sounded like it was coming from my attic, and I was just like, nope, I can't, I- nope! <laughs> Thank god she doesn't have pee undies in this blood roof, though. Be a good place to hide them. Nobody's gonna dig around in here, right? <laughs> Yeah, this knock sounded real. I agree. The sound design was horrifying. So creepy. It was awful. It was miserable. Um, which is why I jumped earlier, because, you know, we're just- we're playing a different game, but Domo jumped off the couch behind, and it sounded like a knock, and I was not ready. Anywho. <laughs> or they'll think the dead bodies- they'll think they are the dead bodies' panties, right? There you go! Problem solved. This is where we should have hit our panties. <laughs> Quick, we gotta go unbury our pantsu. The lights blinked on and I got a clear look at the room I was standing in. Priorities. <laughs> what, what is this place? Are, are those bodies? No, they're just fish. <laughs> Wait, I know these panties. <laughs> these aren't a dead bodies at all, they're yukas. <laughs> At that point, you have a much bigger problem. <laughs> Which is, again, is why this murder room would be a very, very good place to put your panties. Anyway. <laughs> a large portion of the floor had been dug out into something resembling a pool, which was filled with stagnant, discolored water and dismembered bodies. Ooh, hiccups. The bodies were decomposing a lot faster than they naturally would on account of the wetness. Most of them had swarms of maggots instead of faces. Ow. Wait for a second. Hiccups hurt, yo. <laughs> Several bodies had actually washed up on the ground outside the pool as well. Those few that still had limbs looked like they may lose them at any moment. Their torsos were all swollen and black, and everything else was bone white. What? Why are there so many bodies in one place? Because you gotta keep them somewhere, Yuka. They are attempting to organize. Leave them alone. The closest body was spurting a sappy mucus from its nose and mouth and staring at me with an ugly, mean expression. That's just rude. It's true, dead bodies don't just disappear, right? Someone has to get them. Unless you live near a hog farm, they still go somewhere. 
Emmy. <laughs> the thick fluid coming out of it was reddish brown in color and seemed to be a disgusting mixture of blood and dead bugs. What's that sound? Real question is why are there so many bodies outside of this room? You try and collect all the bodies at, at, you know, in a timely fashion. With as many people are being murdered here all the time, this school is big. And then he got the issue of those earthquakes changing the layout all the time. And like, sometimes you just can't get to those bodies. So they have to sit there for a while until you can. This, this school is understaffed with, <laughs> with uh, body collectors. So I'm sorry that the one person who's doing it is having difficulty. I'm calling OSHA. Go for it. <laughs> oh. This is why our schools need more funding. <laughs> Gotta get more, uh... <laughs> more people to carry bodies around. Schools need more... more... body luggers. Uh, some sort of huge door high high along the top of the wall opened up, and I could clearly feel the breeze blowing through the room. It was a trash chute? Now, if uh, Betrayal has taught me anything, it's that you can't climb up the coal chute unless you have a rope. So, Yuka, you can't climb up the body chute unless you have a rope. If I climb up here, maybe I can get into the school building. <laughs> what is that? A body. I I can hear something. It's getting closer. I was afraid of what might be coming through that hole, so I put some distance between it and myself. Something heavy fell from above and splashed into the pool, spraying my face with rotten, stagnant water. <laughs> she got a rope of pea-soaked panties. <laughs> oh no! Well, we gotta go get them. <laughs> Something heavy fell- oh wait, I just read that. Also, barf. Uh, a body! A body! Yes, Yuka! There are many bodies in this room. That wasn't a fun noise. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. The body that had just fallen into the pool of water was wearing a school uniform. As soon as it touched the liquid, it began bubbling and melting into it as if it were a bag of ingredients tossed into a stew pot. One of the poor victim's lungs floated to the surface, giving the whole scene even more of a sick, soup-like appearance. <laughs> Tasty. I, I, I need to get out of here now! I can't stay in here any longer! I dragged my wet foot on a dry part of the ground for a second or two, then made a dash for the door. It's probably a good call. Well, that didn't even do anything to our darkening meter. <laughs> as soon as I was back out in the hall, I fell to my knees in shock. I couldn't even move. The smell of death and decay was still sticking to me, and still trying to snake its way into my nose. It was all I could do not to throw up on the spot. I hadn't eaten anything for hours, so I'm not even sure what I would have actually thrown up, but I still felt like I had to, more strongly than ever before. Maybe it would have been best just to let it come out. I'm sure I would have felt better afterward. But I honestly didn't want to see my own vomit right now. Not after all the other disgusting things I'd seen. I'd had enough. Just go back into the blood room, hurl a little bit, and then go about your day. <laughs> Why has all of this happened? At times like this, this especially, I really longed for my big brother. If only he were here with me. I cried out for him as if in prayer. Big brother, please, come save me. Come save me. I can't move. Is somebody there? Is somebody there? Lol. It hurts. There was a little girl here with her with arm outstretched, begging for help. I rushed over to her side. What's wrong? Are you alright? She was faintly glowing. Is she a ghost? Oh, my stomach really hurts, and my chest feels like it's on fire. She seems to be in a lot of pain, but all I can do for her is... Sorry. Here, I don't see any injuries. 
Is it painful? It hurts. Oh, um... All I could do for her was offer physical comfort. If I rubbed her back, maybe she'd feel better. Thanks. I'm sorry. This is all I know how to do. It feels a little better now. Does it? I'm so glad to hear that. The girl grimaced again, as if she were experiencing some new pain all of a sudden. You shouldn't push yourself too hard, okay? Okay. So did you get lost in here too? Hmm? I don't know. I just woke up in here. Woke up? And I've been so alone. Oh, so you've been all alone all this time? You've been a real trooper then. I gently brushed my hand against the little girl's face, wiping away her tears. I'd only just met her, but I already really felt for her. She had it a lot worse than I did. So, tell me, what's your name? Sachiko? Sachiko. Sachiko. Your name is Sachiko? Uh-huh. I'm Yuka. Yuka Mochida. Yuka. Mochida. Yuka. Big sister Yuka. Big sister? You want me to be your big sister? <laughs> That should be sending up red flags, like, immediately, especially after all the shit that she just went through with Kizumi. Come on. Hmm? Oh, it's just a little weird to hear somebody call me Big Sister, that's all. But I like it. Doesn't she realize? She should know who Sachiko is. I would definitely be, like, be a little sketched out. <laughs> There's just too many red flags here. They did the charm with her name in it, right? Yeah, I don't know. We've never we have never credited Yuko with an overabundance of brains. Um I took Sachiko's tiny little hand in my own and pulled her to her feet. There we go. You can stand, right? Sachiko's hand was so thin and light compared to my own. Not just light, it almost felt like it was completely weightless. I guess she really is a ghost. Sachiko noticed me staring at her, and I must have had quite a look on my face. Mmm, what a... <coughs> Excuse me. Dry throat. It seemed to bother her, so I did my best to force a smile. I'm sure she was worried I'd leave her all by herself again, and I wanted to make sure she knew I was here for her. What's wrong, big sis? <coughs> Oh, nothing. I was just thinking about something else. I'm sorry. Sachiko lowered her head and looked like she was about to cry. Why are you apologizing? Because I think I'm a ghost. <coughs> God, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is something about these little cutesy high voices which aren't even that insanely out of my range of just make my throat hate me and it's so dry and everything is miserable but it's fine because I've ordered a humidifier so it'll be great in a bit <laughs> I'm different from you big sis so I'm so sorry if I scare you uh. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Ella. <laughs> Hugs to you, too. Was just my fear really upsetting this little girl so much? That's terrible. I took Sachiko's hand in both of mine, turning uh, turning to face her and ducking down a little so our eyes were level. It's okay. I'm scared of ghosts, but I'm not scared of you. I promise. You're not scared? For real? No, I'm not. I'm not scared of you, Sachiko. Big sis, are you gonna leave me? Um, I did have to think for a moment, since I knew I couldn't take a ghost with me very far. But in the end, I also knew I couldn't just leave her. Well, will you come with me to look for my big brother? Your big brother? Yeah, he's really kind, really dependable person. I'm sure he'll be really nice to you too, Sachiko. 
Her head was still down, but her eyes were peeking up at me. She looked nervous, but for the first time since we started talking, she also looked hopeful. You don't mind if Sachiko comes with you? Sure, you're not alone anymore. Yuka, your big sister is right here for you. <laughs> Honestly, I was lonely too. I probably wanted her with me just as badly as she wanted someone with her. Ghost or no. Come on, Sachiko. Let's go. I turned to head back down the hall, but was stopped by Sachiko tugging on her, my uniform. She was wearing a forced smile on her face, but still looked uneasy. Big sis, will you do what I say? What? You say? <laughs> what was she going to tell me to do? I was so surprised by the question, I wasn't sure how best to respond. But the longer I thought about it, the more uneasy she looked, so... Um, your big sister will listen to any request you make. Really? Uh, you can ask me anything you want, anytime. Okay. There was clearly something specific she had in mind, but I wasn't going to push her about it. She'd ask me when she was ready. She seemed satisfied with my answer and let go of my uniform, and so... Hand in hand, we continued down the hall in search of my big brother. I don't like this! <laughs> and I don't like the fact that I don't get a choice. Okay, let's... Can we access everything now, since Sachi goes with us? We've gotten this one right. Yeah. Okay. Ugh. Sachiko, this room is scary. Let's not go in here, okay? It's scary. Why? What's in there? Um, it's something you'd better you're better off not seeing. I think it would frighten you. Daniel! What's up, my dude? It would just be better if you didn't look. <laughs> if Big Sis says so, then okay. We are doing good. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a fan of the new hair color, too. <clears throat> Thank God. I didn't want to see those dead bodies again, either. Pokey! <laughs> Death room. The nicest of rooms. I guess Big Brother really isn't in here. I guess not. How are you doing, Daniel? Sachiko, have you seen anyone else in here besides me? Uh huh. That's all she said. And then silently, she squatted on the ground and wrapped her arms around her knees. <clears throat> What's wrong? Are you hurt? Big sis. I'm cold. You're cold? She nodded firmly, almost exaggeratedly. I guess that makes sense. If a ghost can feel pain, there's no reason she couldn't feel changes in temperature. Poor girl. As if to show me just how cold she was, she then started visibly shivering. Burr. <laughs> Sachiko go burr. Hey Sachiko, is there anything I can do to make you feel better? Anything. Mm -hmm. You've been through so much already. I don't want you to have to go through anything else. So if I can help, just tell me. In that case, can I... Have those. She was pointing at my feet. My socks? This is the first time I noticed that Sachiko was walking around barefoot. Ah! I was so busy worrying about myself and about finding my big brother that I'd completely failed to pay any attention to poor Sachiko's appearance. I'm sorry. I didn't notice earlier. It's alright. Sachiko shook her head. If I'm supposed to be her big sister, I really need to be more observant. I need to pay more attention. 
if I were Big Brother, I would have noticed right away and given her my shoes. But it wasn't too late. I took off my shoes and socks and offered them to Sashiko. They were a little wet, but still better than walking on these cold dirt floors and bare feet. The question is, are they wet with blood or wet with pee? I didn't really like the idea of doing that myself, but just one look at this poor lost soul's shaking form convinced me I was doing the right thing. Thank you, big sis. Sachiko took just the socks, leaving the shoes in my hand. Are you okay with only socks, Sachiko? You don't want to wear my shoes over them? I'm okay. If I took both, then you'd be barefoot. She flashed a gentle smile at me, which stayed on her face the whole time she slowly put on both of my socks. I don't want my big sister Yuka to get hurt, after all. Yeah, you might catch pneumonia or something. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Sachiko. I patted her head just like Big Brother always did to me. <laughs> I love you, Big Sis. Her smile had grown. It now stretched from cheek to cheek and I began to feel like I'd do anything at all to keep her happy. I wondered if this is how Big Brother felt when I smiled at him like that. Let's do our best in here, Sachiko. Hey, Lee, how's it going? Uh, despite the severity of the situation, I was in high spirits. I almost forgot just how horrible this place really was. Do our best? <laughs> Let's do our best to find Big Brother. <laughs> it is the death room. <laughs> I'm doing good. We're, uh... Yeah, it's been, it's been a good couple of, like, lazy days since, you know, New Year's night. <laughs> We are making friends with Sachiko. I'm just waiting for her to stab Yuka's face off. I can't wait. <laughs> hmm? Sachiko? Did you say something? She wants her feet. <laughs> Give me your toes! <laughs> I thought that was a giggle, but it sounded... different somehow. Like her voice had changed to someone else's. Or someone else was here. I'm not suspicious. I know that she's gonna do some shit later, and I'm here for it. Mm. Maybe she's just hungry. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> I just want to mess you right up. Hmm? What? Mm. I didn't say anything. So, uh, oh. I guess it was just my imagination then. What is it they usually say in movies? Must have been the wind. Not too likely in a stagnant underground bunker like this, but still. I think I'm just getting paranoid. I need to pull myself together. I'm her big sister, after all. I put on the bravest face I could manage and marched back out into the hall, pausing only to make sure Sachiko was still behind me. Oof, okay. Let's try and hit up the storehouse this time. Oof! Just gonna get a good neck crack. <laughs> Still won't open. Nope. Okay. Let's go show her our panties! <laughs> Look, Sachiko, this is where I buried my pee panties. Don't go telling anyone that they're here. <laughs> Big sis. What is it? Is something wrong? It's my feet. My feet hurt. Your feet? The soles of Sachiko's feet seem to be bothering her quite a bit. As I stood there, I noticed she was fidgeting in place, trying not to stand on them. I guess they would hurt, huh? You've been walking around in just socks after all. She said nothing else. She just stared at my feet. She seemed to want my shoes now, but didn't want to say anything since I offered them earlier and she turned them down. So I just smiled and decided I'd offer them again. Do you want, my sh do you want to wear my shoes? Is that okay? Of course. We wouldn't want you to get hurt anymore now, would we? What about you, big sis? I'm your big sister, so I'll be just fine. I wouldn't accept any objections. I just took off my shoes and handed them to Sachiko without another word. Cheerfully, she slipped them on over, over my socks. 
They were a little big on her, but I knew she'd feel better just having them. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really happy now. Let's get going then, okay? Ah. Sachiko wasn't used to such big floppy shoes. She took one step and stumbled forward. Are you alright? Here, you can take my hand. Okay. Big sister Yuka, I love you. <laughs> Look! <laughs> the panic. Uh, Sachiko, I've already looked in here, and there was nothing to find. Let's head back, okay? Oh, really? <laughs> Excuse me. Oof. Mm. Is it really okay to keep going like this? Let's go this way. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. Uh, Sachiko was pointing down the hall toward the spot where the earthquake had dropped me. This way? Is there something over there? I don't know. But come on. What was that sound? I want to go in there. In there? But that room is locked. It just made a sound it unlocked. Is there something in there? Please? I want to go in. Well, alright. Let's see what's inside then. Sachiko nodded firmly, then practically dragged me by the hand over to the door near the entry point in this underground maze. The storage room? Or storehouse, whatever we're calling it. Wow, this room is pretty big. Over there. Energetic as can be, Sachiko pulled me further into the darkened room. Sachiko, wait! No! Oh! Yikes! I suddenly felt a sharp pain in the sole of my foot and looked down to see what it what I'd step in stepped in. A, a nail? The floor here was actually kind of a mess. It was bumpy and uneven, and there were all kinds of tiny, sharp-looking objects scattered everywhere. Not just old rusty nails, but bits of glass, loose wooden boards with jagged edges and splinters all over them, and plenty else I couldn't even identify. I'm bleeding. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Sa Sachiko. What's wrong, big sis? You're over there? So what was that voice I just heard? Lo 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 lo. Alright. Give me your ID tag. There's a set of bleach white bones in a heap against the wall. So tiny. Probably just a child. Oh, yeah. Sachiko, how old are you? How old am I? Yeah, like, what age are you? You're in elementary school, right? I don't know. I can't remember. Oh. I'm sorry. Sachiko just stood there with her head head hung low and a look of disdain on her face. She didn't say another word. It seems safe to assume that she probably didn't have any memories from when she was alive at all. No, no, I'm sorry I asked. Don't worry about it, please. Okay. Sorry. Looking a bit closer at the pile of bones, there's a student ID name tag jutting out from the victim's ribcage, identifying her as female. Renaissance Elementary School, Yukari uh, Sakia. The stack of folded up Japanese style futons. What's this? It uh looks like an old instant camera. Sachiko had found an old oversized instant camera lying around somewhere and was holding it triumphantly in her hands. Uh, Bright. I don't know if I asked. How are you doing, Lee? How's it going? Sorry, I'm <laughs> hyper focused on this game right now. Ugh. It startled me. Looks like it still works. May I have it? Sure, but isn't it heavy? That's okay. I'm happy. Smiling from ear to ear, Sachiko carefully examined every inch of that camera. She was an innocent little girl with a brand new toy. Big sis, Sachiko is tired. Do 
you want to take a quick nap on these futons? Mm-hmm. Carefully tiptoeing across the litter strewn floor, nursing my sore my sore and bloodied foot the whole while, I sneak my way over to the futons. I didn't much like the idea of sleeping in the same room as a dead child, but I had to admit I was pretty exhausted too. I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm almost back to full health. Fantastic! You've been sick for a while, my dude. That shit's scary. <laughs> But I'm glad you're doing so much better. <laughs> They're a little damp and musty, but if we lay them out, we can at least get off our feet for a while. I'm so sleepy. Okay, I'm laying yours out right now. As soon as the futon was on the ground, as flat as it would go, Sachigo sprawled out on it. It wasn't long before her eyes started drooping. Yay, futon! Just seeing this innocent little girl joyously stretching out to take a nap was enough to lift my spirits and renew my hope. I'm so glad Sachiko's here with me. Thank you, big sis. Thank you too, Sachiko. Thought she said her eyes started drooling. <laughs> I mean, that's one way to describe crying, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what I would do if you weren't here with me. <clears throat> oh, she out. She really must have been tired. She was out like a second. Uh, she was out like a light the second her head touched the bedding. <laughs> so cute. I should sleep too. I've been walking a lot. I hope that when I wake up back at home, you won't be. But that's fine. No, Yuga! <laughs> oh, she's sleeping. <laughs> I awoke to find myself being shaken. Sachiko was trying to get me up, and her expression had gone white as a sheet. Big sis! Big sis! What is it? She was on the verge of tears. Something seemed to have really spooked her. Did that huge man find us? Was she attacked? It's okay. Tell me what happened, nice and slow. I lost my hairpin. Your hairpin? When I woke up, it was gone. Oh, okay. So that's all then. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that's all. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it might have been something more scary. Where did you lose it? If we look, I'm sure we'll find it. Two of us searched every last inch of the room, with me with my wounded foot, but we came up empty-handed. Sachiko, is there anything your big sister can do for you? The entire time we searched, Sachiko hadn't said a word. I was hoping invoking our sisterly bond might help cheer her up. My hair keeps getting in my eyes, and it hurts. Give me that thing you're wearing. She raised her right hand slowly and pointed to my headband. That's, um... I'm sorry, but that's the one thing I can't give away. As soon as I refused, Sachiko let out a faint, otherworldly groan. There you go. <laughs> In the next moment, her face distorted and changed. She no longer looked like an innocent little girl. She looked well and truly like a demon now. Sachiko? Give it to me. Give it to me. Sachiko, chew. The look in her eyes alone sent chills down my spine. These were the eyes of someone who meant to harm, or meant me harm, and was perfectly capable of inflicting it. What do I do? Give her the headband? I mean, do we want to murder Yuka, or... Let's murder Yuka. Sachiko was continuing to groan under her breath, fearing what she might be capable of. I desperately tried to console her. Sachiko, please! I want you to listen! This is something my mom just bought for me, and it's a very important reminder of her. That's why I can't give it to you. Your mom? Somehow or another, that seemed to quell her anger. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> uh... Her facial expression snapped back into that of the gentle, kind girl I'd been talking to all this time. That's right. I'm really sorry, but I have to turn you down on this one. That's from your mom? She was oddly receptive to this explanation, and even seemed fascinated by it. 
Maybe I caused her to remember something about her own mother. She was a little girl after all, so her mom was probably really dear to her in life. Still is, in death, too. Mom. Mom. She looked like she was on the verge of tears again. I was beginning to feel bad that I'd even broached the subject. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. She still seemed a bit sad, but she nodded. Maybe she understood that I wouldn't give her my headband, and maybe she was okay with it? Disappointed. <laughs> um, I don't know where to go anymore. Oh my gosh. Excuse you, knees. Please work with me here. There's no reason for us to be in this room, right, Sachiko? Let's just go. She's still mad at me, huh? I probably should have been more sisterly and just given her the headband, but... But this headband, headband is... I'll just wander around from room to room. So it's fine. <laughs> Sachiko? Sachiko. Hey, Sachiko! She wasn't even looking at me anymore. I must have really upset her. Listen, Sachiko. I can't give you my headband, but I can give you something else. Anything you want. Something else? Mm -hmm. There's not a lot I can do, but if I can make you feel more at ease, I'd be glad to help. Something else? Alright, then let's go in here. But this room is... I really don't want to go back in there. Uh, Sachiko! Without a moment's hesitation, Sachiko just opened the door and walked right in. I didn't even have an opportunity to stop her. I'll give her my tongue. <laughs> what do I do now? Gotta go in. Can't tell her no twice! First thing I noticed when I entered the room was Sachiko's form sprawled out on the ground at the foot of the body pool. She was twitching a bit and moaning again, but this time it sounded more like a moan of pain than of anger. Sachiko! Sachiko! Sachiko, are you alright? I stepped over her and turned around so as to put the decaying bodies behind my back uh, and out of my sight and started shaking her. I felt like I absolutely needed to snap her out of whatever this was, before something terrible happened. Big sis. Thank goodness, you're- uh, uh. I could feel her tiny, cold hand on my abdomen, through the thin cloth of my skirt. She was pushing me backwards with tremendous force. So I do not. Don't touch me. I lost my balance and almost instantly- uh, I lost my balance almost instantly and toppled over into the pool? Somehow felt like my fall occurred in slow motion. The walls and ceiling of the room grew uh, more and more distant, but it happened gradually. <laughs> Barf! <laughs> then I felt the murky liquid on my back and heard the splash. I was in the pool of bodies. <laughs> Barf! <laughs> because I'd fallen backwards, it took me far too long to regain my bearings. I was submerged in that horrible, tainted water, close to drowning. I finally broke through the surface, dodging the, uh, dodging the many dislodged eyeballs that were floating uh, on it like peas in chicken soup. Each one wrapped in dull red, bulging veins. I didn't even want to think about what was in all the water I'd swallowed. Fortunately, much of it was still on my tongue. My mouth was filled with tiny bits and pieces of other human beings. The taste was overpowering. Barf. I was gagging and belching so hard it felt like I was going to regurgitate all of my internal organs. You need to. <laughs> I tried to scream but could barely get any sound past the foul, lumpy stew in my mouth. <laughs> Big sis, you're disgusting. So gross. <laughs> so chunky. I was losing consciousness fast, and I remember silently praying, silently hoping that this was all just a dream. I 
as the world faded around me, I just kept focusing on that one last wish. Please let me wake up in my bed. Big sis here! Sachiko! And no other choice. I grabbed Sachiko's outstretched hand and marveled again at her strength as she effortlessly pulled me out of the water. Ugh. My entire body, from head to toe, was covered in sticky, goopy chunks of unidentifiable human flesh from countless different people. Big sis, you've got something on your head. <laughs> you got red on you. Something? Slowly, hesitantly, I raised my hand to my head to feel around and determine what this something might be. I wasn't looking forward to the answer. What I felt was a huge clump of matter stuck to my hair, and just touching it lightly caused some uh, some of it to stick to my hand as well. <coughs> it was a massive ball of fingers and toes. <coughs> How? <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. <coughs> Big sis, there's still lots more on you. The severed digits were all so sticky and slimy that they'd gotten completely wrapped up in my hair like rollers. They weren't coming out easily. They live there now. You gotta deal with it, Yuka. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, big sis. Big sis. I must have passed out. When I came to, I was lying on the ground with Sachiko looking over me. Big sis, I'm sorry. She was on the verge of tears again. But was that her voice I heard giggling at me? If not, then whose was it? Was that just hearing things? That had to be it. The sweet little girl couldn't possibly have been that twisted. No, it's okay. I didn't care how filthy I was. As long as Sachika was alright, that was all that mattered. Yes, she was my little sister now, after all. I had to take care of her. I had to look after her. <laughs> Big sis, you're so slow. Yikes, we're at full darkening. Whoopsies! Uh -huh. Wait for me, to please, Sachiko. What's wrong with me? My legs feel so heavy. Somehow, Sachiko had wound up in the lead, and I was following her blindly, struggling to keep up with her blistering pace. <laughs> Big sis, you're all gross. Keep away from me. Uh, I looked down at my uniform. Sure enough, it was soaked through with the blood of those poor victims in the body pool, and smelled really awful. Y you're right, I am gross. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't recall saying that. Or even trying to say that. It's like my mouth was moving on its own, speaking someone else's thoughts. Big sis, you sure are an idiot, you know that. Yeah, I sure am. If this was how she was going to treat me, then why was I being so nice to her? Why was I doing whatever she asked of me? It was bothering me, and yet, it wasn't. I honestly didn't care anymore. I was content just to follow this abusive little girl to the ends of the earth. How long had I been walking, I wondered. Sachiko, are you still okay to walk? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was following Sachiko despite myself. I had no idea how much time had passed, but it felt like an eternity. And she completely stopped answering any of my questions. I guess that's enough. She came to a halt. What's wrong, Sachiko? She turned and looked up at me with wide, innocent eyes. There's something Sachiko wants you to give her. What, what is it? What was it going to be this time? I honestly didn't want to know, but the question came out of my mouth anyway. And so did this. Whatever it is you want, Sachiko, you can have it. Just for you. Well, in that case... Can I have your life? My life? Yeah, just give it over, Yuga. <laughs> Somehow, some part of me knew this was coming. It was only a matter of time. I, I can't give you... Once again, I couldn't seem to control the words coming out of my mouth. 
It just said whatever it wanted to say, regardless of how I felt. You may have my life. <laughs> she was laughing again. It was wild, crazy laughter. She was ecstatic. Uh, no, no! Why not? You said you'd give me anything I wanted. Because you're my big sister, right? Sachiko's smile almost seemed to twinkle in the dull light of the corridor. She had the face of an angel, but it was all just a mask. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, no please! I mustered all the strength I had, trying with whatever life was left in me to denounce her words and resist her pull. There was no hope for me anymore, but I still clung to what I could. If I could reject her statement and tell her she was wrong. No, no, please no! Hmm. Please don't joke about things like that, okay? Let's just hurry and find my big brother. My brother will be able to help us somehow. I know he will. So let's just keep searching. Your big brother? But that's right! I'll never be like big brother, but I'll try my best. Big brother this and big brother that. God, you're annoying. Just give it to me. I'm gonna kill you. Kill you, kill you, kill you. I'll make you wrap those hands around your neck and die. Just die already! S S Sachiko! My body shook and spasm uh, spasmed uncontrollably. I was being overtaken by an invisible force. He was compelling me to speak, to say what would be my very last words on this earth. A suicide note when you get right down to it. Uh, I, I guess there's nothing I can do. Okay. I'll give it to you. I'll give my life to you, Sachiko. It's all yours. <laughs> GG. <laughs> it was instantaneous. With one single blow, my skull was cracked wide open and blood splattered far and wide. <laughs> bye bye, Yuka. I could feel blood trickling out from my nostrils and my right ear. My brain was jutting out from the from inside my head, fully exposed to the air, but I was still conscious. I could still feel everything. <laughs> Lol! <laughs> Saw a bright flash of light and realized she'd just taken my picture with that instant camera she'd been holding on to. <laughs> Japanese mythology strong ghosts can't harm innocent people, only when they either give three personal items or agree of being killed by them. Yes. Oh, wait, I've seen this picture before. <laughs> Lol. That's why she wanted that headband so bad. Right, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, what a pretty picture this is. I'll title it Lowly Woman. Sachiko was such a cute little girl. Um, but now her face was twisted into a hateful, spiteful grimace as she looked down on me in contempt. <coughs> I know. How about I show this to your big brother? You told me I could do any or have anything I wanted, right? Well, he's my big brother now. <laughs> GG, Yuka. <laughs> Sachiko began petting my sticky, matted head with her coarse, sticky hands in a mockery of her of my previous gentleness with her. What a filthy face! Getting this was my goal all along, you know. My scrap of paper from the charm. I want to play with you again, big sis. So I'll spare you from your fate for now. Let's do this again real soon, big sister Yuka. Well, there we go. There's, a. Uh... Oh, is it chapter six already? All right, cool. Well, there's chapter six, Meyer. And we got Tooth available now. This is the picture Satoshi sees when you get the perfect, <laughs> my perfect ending. So this is one of the stories that happens in the original corpse party. Yeah, that makes sense. I wonder if your percent was lower 
Uh, could you live through it? Possibly. I know I'm gonna be doing, like, a bunch of the, um, the other endings at some point in the Discord. Uh, I got the achievements Only Way Out, Renaissance Recoverer, and Great Harbor Guardian. Um, so yeah, we'll probably, I mean, like, at some point, I'll do, like, a lot of the other endings in, um, in the server. Because I'm curious, and I want to see all the bad ends at the very least. <laughs> Um, and I do want to see if there are any variations, because we already had the variation for, uh, the previous chapter. Where did you go? What was it? Yeah, for Shang Shangri-La, we already had, like, the slight deviation, um, from what we had previously. So I'd be curious to see what happens there. It's 5.48, so there's no point tr starting the next chapter, but we can do that tomorrow! Um, holy shit, we might actually get this done this weekend. That's exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, some of these chapters have been, like, really long and others have been really short, so it's really hard to gauge how much we'll actually get done. Um, but it's cool. Again, I'm still super enjoying it so far. Good night, everyone, and thank you so much for your effort. <laughs> Thank you for stopping in, Lee. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll do, we'll play uh, the tooth chapter tomorrow. Um, but until then, time nicely today, right? It was very good. Uh, I definitely 100% planned that. <laughs> it's good background noise. <laughs> Just listen to me uh, scream and you know talk about all these terrible, grotesque uh, scenes that are happening on the <laughs> teeth. Uh, I mean, from the looks of it, yeah. So unless they have, like, some hidden secret chapter, then that'll be it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm super excited to get through this. Uh, so yeah, tomorrow, 5pm Central, we'll finish it up. It'll be good. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys are welcome as always. Thank you for coming in and hanging out and chatting with me and, you know, watching all the terrible things with me. I appreciate it as always. Um, let's see if there is anyone available for our raid. Give everything a second to update. There we go. Um, it looks like John Wolf is playing Stardew, but he's been playing for about four hours now, so I don't know if he's going to be playing for much longer. And my friend Incredicate is playing Final Fantasy VII The Remake. Um, we can raid some of them, or if somebody has a suggestion, that is also an option. Nope, there's only, there's only more Frank. Not enough Bear Bear. Emmy. Also, thank you, Andrew, for dropping the Discord and the Twitter. Obviously, I keep everything updated in there. We do lots of fun stuff in the Discord. Um, but yeah, recommendations for uh, rating? Or shall we just call it there? Boop, 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 boop. Can I exit out of you, game? Rogue Ninja Layla is playing Crooked Man. Oh shit, yeah. I love the... I love that series. It's good stuff. Well, we can pop in. And, uh... You know, worst comes to worst. We'll just join the raid train. <laughs> um, so we'll start that up. And we'll go... Uh, we'll go raid Miss Miss Layla over there. But yeah, as always, thank you everyone for popping in. Um, thanks for just being wonderful, fantastic folks. I love y'all. Let's go.